Well, hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. I am here today for a Friday Reads video, my usual thing. Film on Friday, post on Saturday. It's what I do. So it is really cold where I live. It was uh, negative two degrees the last time I checked the temperature, which was uh, earlier today. And yeah, it's it's cold. So if if and I've heard it's really cold in a lot of different places around the country. So if it's cold where you are, I hope you're staying warm. Hope you're still staying safe, um, masking up, staying social distant, and all that. Jumping in, I want to start with another channel recommendation. I mentioned last week that I'd try not to recommend really new channels, and this is another one that I think has only been around for about a month, but I'm doing it. It's AJ Dunn Reads and Writes. I've watched a couple of his videos this week and enjoyed them and wanted to share. He mentioned in one of his videos that he uh, is his current goal is to get to 50 subscribers. Let's let's try to do that. Let's let's try to get to get him to 100. Why not? The thing that really made me say, okay, I have to share this channel right now is that he shared a recipe for crackers. And you, if you know me, you know I'm really into baking. <laughs> it, it just makes me happy. I'm baking shows, anything like that. And that's when I was like, okay, I need to share this now. So I will link his channel down below in the description box. Uh, please check it out. And if you like it, subscribe. And the other uh, note on that is a channel I recommended last year uh, Bear Reads Books. He's back. He took a little break from Booktube in the uh, latter part of 2020. He is back, so I thought I would share that news because it makes me happy. And I will link his channel down below. He is Australian. He talks. Uh, he um, basically took a break because he was feeling like he had a little bit of pressure and uh, with his reading, and he had judged the Booktube press. It was first year on Booktube. That's really hard. Uh, the, I mean, having a Booktube channel, if you have one, you know. If not, it's just it's a it's a lot of pressure to constantly be creating content and all that stuff. So I totally get it, but I'm glad he's back. And again, I will put his channel in the description box down below. So check it out. A lot of the stuff that's been going on this week, I, I uh, did not make as much progress in my audiobooks that I've been listening to as I wanted to because I've been binge listening to a podcast called You're Wrong About. I mentioned them a couple of weeks ago. Because they did an episode about, or, or like a series about Princess Diana, and I found it really interesting. And now I've, I've gone back to the beginning, like the very first episode, and have been following along. And I just, this week, finished their 2018 episodes, and I'm about to start their 2019 episodes, because I'm, I'm like a completion freak. If I, if I find something I like, <laughs> I go all in. So I, I think it did take... For somebody who went back to the beginning, it did take a couple of episodes for them to really find their groove as a podcast, but I, I just really enjoy it. It does something I really appreciate. The The idea of it is that they look at things that were, we got wrong in pop culture, and sometimes we got it wrong because for a, a specific reason. Sometimes it's a kind of vague reason. Sometimes the thing we got wrong isn't exactly what you would expect. Sometimes we're mostly right, but a key detail is a little bit off. For instance, one of the episodes was about uh, the Columbine shooting, and they talked about how, because it was being covered live, a lot of misinformation was shared about it, and then by the, by the time it got corrected, it didn't get widely reported, so a lot of people remember things that were inaccurate about what would happen and who the shooters were, things like that. I find it to be a fascinating podcast, so if you're into that kind of thing, I would rec recommend checking it out. Um, I will look to see if there's a link to like a show page or anything like that. And if there is, I'll put it down uh, below. But it's just, it does, some, I, I love that idea. I used to listen to Malcolm Gladwell's Revisionist History Podcast, but I'm not into Malcolm Gladwell anymore. Because I really like this notion of going back and sort of rediscovering history. And one of the things they talk about a lot is how we've created power structures and how we love narratives. And we tend to give in to the power structures and the narratives that are e that have already been created, or we go with the, we go with narratives that are easy when the truth can be a lot more complicated. And sometimes we do the opposite. And it's just I really enjoy the podcast. In case you can't tell, so again, it's called "You're Wrong About." I will put information of, uh, in the description box down below. I don't know if it would be a link to something or what. By the way, both Guinness and Jameson are asleep right here, and because it's so cold, they they actually Jamie cuddled up to Guinness. And that never ends well. Let me see if I can show you. Here we go. There's Guinness. And there's Jamie. Eventually, Guinness is going to stretch and spread his legs. And Jamie will get upset. But for now, we're doing okay. 
So there's your update on the dogs. We'll see how this <laughs> progresses if I can finish my Friday Reads video before things get ugly. The other bookish news this week is that uh, they just announced today that the overstory by Richard Powers, which was a Pulitzer Prize winner, is going to be adapted into a series for Netflix. And I, if you follow along, you might know. It's been a while since I talked about it. But I attempted to read the overstory after it won the Pulitzer, right around the time I decided to do my Pulitzer Prize project, and did not finish so I'm not a huge fan of the book. I think I, so. The, it sort of is structured like a series of connected short stories. And then I can't, I don't remember specifics, but I thought each individual story seemed okay, but together I didn't like them. And then it, it, there's something that happened right before you started part two that really threw me. And I, I was, I tried to struggle through a little bit further and was not enjoying it. So I might revisit it for my Pulitzer Prize project. But I'm not a fan. It would, would be interesting to see how it works as a series. I, 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 I'd love to hear what you think. I'm not convinced. But I'm also not a fan of the book. The other thing I'm not convinced about is that it is uh, going to be produced by the people who produced the TV show adaptation of Game of Thrones. And I have never seen an episode of Game of Thrones. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> so... It's not a selling point for me, but I also have never watched an episode, so I can't really say anything about the quality of the show or the, the work that they produce. So it's an interesting thing that happened. I am not necessarily looking forward to it, but I think it's interesting. Could be done well. I don't know. So let me know. Are, are you excited about the Overstory as a TV adaptation? Comment section is down there. Moving into the actual Friday Reads portion of the video, I have good news. I just barely made it under the wire, but I finished The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr. And interestingly, I, this do doesn't mean anything, but it's funny. I've noticed that the, the acknowledgement section in books starts getting longer and longer and longer. Uh, his acknowledgement section is, is, is like an accept acceptance speech at an awards show. It, he names people and then says something to them, and it goes on for pages. And it's nothing on the quality of the book. It's just kind of funny to me that this, the acknowledgement section of book, it seems to grow larger and larger and larger all the time. So and it, 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 that doesn't mean anything. I loved this book. If you follow along, you know that. I've been enjoying this book since the moment I, pick, I picked it up and started reading it. What a good book. It's about two enslaved men on a plantation in the pre-Civil War era who are in love and... It's a very complex book. It has so many different levels, it, it, and it allows itself to be complicated, which is interesting. I talked about that in my last Friday Reads video, how one of the things that tends to bother me about historical fiction is that it gives the characters modern perspectives and tends to reduce, sort of for, in, for the sake of good versus bad, it tends to reduce the good characters to have like modern perspectives on how things are. And the bad characters have, you know, the are hardcore racist and bigoted and all that stuff. But this book allows people to be complex. There's a whole variety of opinions and approach to racism and slavery and homosexuality and things like that. And it's just fascinating. And it's interesting because at the end, the first, I think it's the first person that Robert Jones Jr. thanks is James Baldwin. And I think his Twitter handle or his social media is at Son of Baldwin. Yeah, the very first person he thanks is James Baldwin. And I do see influences from James Baldwin, but the person I kept thinking about as I read this book was Toni Morrison, and she actually is listed among the people he thanks as well. So if you're a fan of Toni Morrison, like I am, I really recommend this book because he feels like a great successor to her. This is a very complex book. It's a very thoughtful book and it really makes you think in, in, in ways that reminded me of Toni Morrison and I, I do see the James Baldwin element particularly if you look at um, Giovanni's Room I am really fascinated to see where Robert Jones Jr. goes from here this is just a wonderful book I and it's funny because this is one of the first books that I have read in 2021 and I I think it could easily end up being my favorite read of 2021 that is what happened to me last year one of my the first books that I read in 2020 was Song of Solomon, which was my favorite read of 2020. 
So it seems wild that that could happen two years in a row, but here we are, and here I am loving, 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 loving this book. One of the things that is really interesting about this is it talks about the introduction of new ideas that are restrictive and discriminatory against people. Uh, we see flashbacks to um, tribes in Africa who where the, there is a gay wedding taking place and there is a white colonizer who is brought in and he sees it and he tells them, no, this is not something that should be allowed and they laugh him off. But of course, the introduction of these outside influences makes homosexuality a crime and you see that again in the in the the books present which where samuel and isaiah are living in a barn people know they're a couple but don't have a problem with it and then a, a different enslaved man amos is taught to be a sort of reverend to the other enslaved people on the plantation and he takes his new position and he starts telling people it's like hey what these guys are doing is wrong, and it's only when he starts pointing this out to people that people start having a problem with it. Nobody, nobody really had a problem with them before. Nobody disliked them. Everybody respected them and their work ethic. And it's about that. But Amos himself is a very complicated character. Religion is not his only motivation. He is also trying to use position to get a better place for himself and for the woman that he loves and so you see the creation of hierarchy within the the enslaved people and it's it's a fascinating book i absolutely recommend it and just wow i hope that the, we will be hearing a lot more about this book as the year continues again it's the year is very young but uh this is around the time shuggy bane came out and shuggy bane ended up winning the booker prize so I'm hoping that this will pop up on some book awards throughout the year, end up on some best of lists. It'll, I feel reasonably certain that it will end up on my best of 2021 list. I, I, I really hope for good things for this book. I know a lot of people have recommended this. A lot of people have picked this up and said great things about it. So I, I feel a little weird. I feel late to the party having finished it. But, you know, I'm still on this slow reading journey and I'm really enjoying that. And it feels like I've taken so much pressure. I'm like, I'm not obsessing over the news anymore. And I, I'm not trying to rush my way through books anymore. And I feel better. And I think I really enjoyed the experience of working slowly through this book because it allowed me to savor it in a way. It's a difficult book. And I don't want to make it sound like this is, it's pleasant in any way. It's, it's, it's actively unpleasant in all of the ways that it should be. And it can be difficult for that. And Robert Jones Jr., he, he wants you to think and engage with this book. And that's a good thing. And it's I really enjoyed the uh, having the ability to slowly work my way through that and think about it and savor it in ways. So, yeah, this is a huge book for me for 2021. And I, I, I really hope that if everyone who's picked it up has been enjoying it, if you haven't picked it up, please check it out. Think about it. What an amazing book. I'm trying to think if I want to do an individual review of this, I'll, I'll, I'll try to decide by next week. And, but for now, I'm just going to say, because I finished it this morning and I really want to, uh, think about it a little bit before I really formulate my thoughts. So that's probably what I'll do. The next physical book that I will be starting is The Mirror and the Light because I need to read that for the BookTube prize and it's a it's a chunky book so I got to get started on it. So stay tuned for that. I did start and I ended up starting two different audios this week because I, I mentioned last week that the next audio book I would start would be Just As I Am by Cicely Tyson. So my husband and I bought a copy of that book on Libro because on Libro it... It uh, gives a kickback to a bookstore that you like, and we support the Montana Book Company in Helena, Montana. If you're ever in Helena, check out that store. It's wonderful. They, I love them. Anyway, so we purchased it from them. My husband started it, and I had been thinking I would start it at the same time, but it, we hadn't really thought about this, but we can't both be listening to it at the same time. Because as he made progress, if I tried to read it, I'd, I'd be rewinding it, and then it would constantly be getting messed up. And then I suddenly realized halfway through the week, it's available on Scribd. <laughs> so I started the audio, I did start the audio, but I started it late and I'm only, I think, 11 or 12% through. So my husband and I are kind of doing a buddy read of it, but I really need to catch up because he's, he's halfway through. So 
that is something I will be working on this coming week. And I'm really enjoying it so far, the part that I've read. I had heard that it was narrated by Cicely Tyson and Viola Davis. It turns out Cicely Tyson reads an sort of introduction. Viola Davis wrote a foreword for the book and she does the audio for that. Uh, but it's actually narrated by, I think her name is Robin Miles and she does a great job, but I, I, I feel like I, I, I made a mistake there and I mentioned that in a video, so I should correct it and just point that out. It is actually narrated by Robin Miles, but Viola Davis reads her forward and Cicely Tyson reads an introduction. Uh, by the way, if Viola Davis ever writes in a memoir or an autobiography, I am absolutely purchasing it because when she talks about her life in the forward, <laughs> I want more. I want a lot more about that. And I'm really enjoying it so far. In the part that I've I've been through, she's really only talking about her childhood, but she does start by talking about the movie Sounder and how she got cast in that. And it's a really interesting story, and I'm, it just makes me sad all over again that she died. By the way, uh, so I'm reading this after Cicely Tyson died. We watched The Sound of Music at, uh, this past weekend uh, because Christopher Plummer died, and my husband had never seen The Sound of Music. We watched it religiously as a child. My sisters and I used to watch it all the time. But inter interestingly... We always turned it off after the wedding, because if you watch The Sound of Music and stop at the wedding, it's basically a romantic comedy. <laughs> Maybe not a romantic comedy, but it's like a romance movie, and it has a happy ending, and it's fine. If you continue after the wedding, the Nazis show up, Rolf becomes a Nazi, and it, it, they have to flee. It's, yeah, I don't think I'm spoiling it since this movie's been around for ages, but and the musical's been around for ages. Um... But yeah, so that's that's what we would do. So it, it still feels like the ending is almost new to me. But yeah, anyway, I, I recommend it. It's on Disney Plus streaming. So the other book that I started on audio before I realized that Just As I Am um, was available on Scribd was Real Life by Brandon Taylor. And I am going to keep working on the audio book. I, I, had, I had forgotten that I had placed a hold in the audio on Libby. And I had the physical copy, so I need to read this for the book two prize. I can't because it's for the book two prize. I can't tell you my impressions of it so far. I think I am thirty percent of the way through the audio. Can't tell you what I'm thinking, so that's just a tease. I said started listening to this. I don't because it's from Libby, and now I'm also listening to the audio of Just as I Am. I don't know if I'm going to finish the audio or if I'm going to switch to the book at some point and finish it that way for the book two prize. But just FYI, this is another thing that I got going this week. So that is my reading life for this past week. I'd love to hear what you've been reading. If you finished anything, DNF'd anything, hated anything, uh, and your life outside of that. Like I've talked about podcasts and movies a little bit. So if you have anything you'd like to talk about or recommend, please, please, please put it in the comment section down below. As always, I really appreciate your time. Hope you're staying warm. Hope you're staying safe. And I will be back until next time. Happy reading.